Part 5 of Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction or explosion, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer, instead of a marksman, under the orders of banking magnate, instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet, it makes unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life, in other words, unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon, and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feelings in a rational way, or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help, and do not know how to associate with others or defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence, and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strength and weaknesses. Okay, from Omaha.com. Very telling story here. North Dakota principal who worked as teacher in Omaha is charged with arson and school fire. Bismarck, North Dakota, the AP. Shadow Principal accused of setting fire to the North Dakota High School where he worked his past background checks and came recommended by clergy and mentors in other states, the board chairman for Dickinson Catholic School says. Thomas Sander, 30, is charged with felony arson and endangering by fire or explosion after a fire early Monday that heavily damaged Trinity High School and forced its closing. You remain in jail Thursday. You remain jailed Thursday. Sander was a teacher at the now closed Holy Ghost School in Omaha in 2008. From mid January to mid May last year, he worked six to eight hours a week as part of an unpaid administrative partitium at St. Albert High School in Council Bluffs. The practicum, essentially an internship, was part of his master's degree program. Sander was hired in in Dickinson last July. He's a graduate of a well-known and prestigious prep school in St. Louis. He has graduate degrees in administration. Monsignor Patrick Schumacher, the the school board chairman, said Thursday. With his qualifications, recommendations, and worth and work ethic, we made the decision to hire him. Sander, who has master degrees in administration and education and was completing a master's program in theology when he was hired, graduated in 2008 from Magis Catholic Teacher Corps at Crichton University. University spokeswoman Cindy Workman declined to release any other details. The Dickinson job was Sanders' first full-time principal position, Schumacher said. Sander is accused of setting the contents of a file cabinet on fire, starting the blaze that caused extensive damage in the school's office area and heavily smoke damage throughout the building. Heavy smoke damage throughout the building. No one was hurt, including a teacher who lived in an apartment on the second floor of the school building. Well... Fortunate for for him, huh? Schumacher 
called some of the undisclosed details of the case bizarre. He did not elaborate. There's a lot of speculation as to how this may happen, he said. Every scenario has gone through my mind. I think I have exhausted the possibilities in my mind to try and understand what was going on in his mind. I just don't know. There are no answers. Classes were called off for the week. They are to resume Monday with the 170 students spreading out among two elementary schools, a junior high school, and a church. So, let's see. That being said... Nearly two dozen people have been arrested after the state went after a major home insurance fraud ring operating in South Florida. At a news conference Tuesday afternoon, Miami-Dade State Attorney Kathleen Fernandez-Rundle and State Chief Financial Officer Jeff Atwater said 22 people were charged in Operation Flames and Floods. That's right. The insurance people were starting the flames, causing the floods. Fernandez Rundle said the group set fires and created floods in a number of homes in the Miami, uh, over in the Miami. Okay, now, at least I'm not the only one that <laughs> writes bad sometimes. Over the last seven years and made billions by filing fraudulent claims. The alleged ringleader of the group, George Fosto, is Pianzo Jr., a public adjuster. He's an insurance adjuster. Okay? And so are sheriffs, by the way. Sheriffs are also insurance adjusters. Uh, because they're cashing in on insurance, but we'll get into that more next hour. Reportedly, he received 20 to 30% of each fraudulent claim. Espinanza and his wife are facing up to 30 years in prison if convicted. All right. Okay, well, this is good. They caught him. But this is the kind of stuff that um, has been going on forever. This is, this is the war of the silent weapons for quiet wars. This is the... Uh, force used against all of us because we're just cash cows and in order to get us to produce we have to be prodded with a cattle prod from time to time to get us to uh, into action so these attorneys can basically cash in on the back end we want you to know these things and, and you know this is why we're here okay and with that being said um, I've got Tammy Peppermint here with me here to help uh, fill in some of the holes and uh, try to give you, you know, the story uh, from her perspective and make this clear as possible. Tammy, where do you want to start? Well, I wanted to start, thank you, um, with the arrest made in the home insurance fraud ring. Now, years ago, I had a couple friends, Erica and Jeffrey Henderson. You can find them on my Facebook wall. Um, they're friends of mine on on Facebook, and um, they had witnessed the sheriff's office out in California igniting the wildfires by throwing flares into dry grass and abandoned homes. And upon this, Jeffrey had video evidence. The video evidence was taken by local law enforcement, of course, and all of their children had been taken off of them since that date. The, the, this is being recorded. You are you operating under the color okay. of law. No, uh, no, no you those can't. are my children. Under Title Twenty Four of the of the of the United. Why would somebody call and say you're abusing them? Uh, that's Ma'am? none of your business. It is my no, it is not. I need no, your... it is not. I can't give it to you until you open the door. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. You can't be on my door and draw a gun on me and say you can't give my badge number. I kick the door in or ask if you kick the door open, you will be sued. That is my violation of my rights. I have not done anything wrong. You can't come to my door and beat my door down. Title 24, 1983. I want everybody's name and badge number. We're gonna need a list. You too. Move, move the shield a little bit, please, sir, so I can get your face. I want badge numbers. You have no authority here. 56. I can just write them down. I would like 
to know your name and badge number now. Refusing to no, open the I door is not breaking where, the law. Where's the warrant? Where's the warrant? We're not breaking the law by There's refusing. no warrant. There's no warrant. You have no warrant. You have to have a warrant. That's the rules. And trying tricks like saying, do I have a gun is really, it's really terrible. When I'm saying, hey, look, you got a gun. I'm not going to step outside my door. And then, oh, you have a gun? No, I have this recorded. Do you see? Hello? That kind of stuff doesn't work on me. Hello? What's that? You understand that we're the police and we're going to help you guys out? Of course I know that you're the police. You have a police officer uh, uniform on. I should hope you're the police. Okay. Okay, hang on a second. Some it's the county. Hello? We... Are you here as a peace officer yes. or a law enforcement officer? Hold on, please. Go ahead. Are you operating as a police officer or a law enforcement officer? We're here to make sure that everyone inside is okay. Uh, everyone is okay. Are you operating as a, as a as a peace officer or a law enforcement officer? Okay, apparently we didn't go to the same law school, so I'm not quite sure. Rio Hondo, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple, a couple months ago. Uh -huh. Sir, what's your name? Sir? My name is Jeffrey Pierce Henderson, uh, I and I am lawfully abiding in this home, and I need a warrant before I open the door. That's the rules. In order to come into my home, you need a warrant. That's the that's the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Jeffrey? Yes, sir. Would you step out and talk to this? No, sir. Uh -huh. I am safe in my abode. I this from the fraud department. Uh, resulting in uh, uh, as uh, from the, that case, the that I closed. Right, and, and we have problems with our neighbors. We have very uh, extensive list of problems with our neighbors. Right now, we're fighting an unlawful detainer. Right now, I've had to sue. I've had to sue my neighbor two doors down in small claims, and we've been called on C CPS has been called on us before and what happens is they ask us to come outside From the Gownhausen Charter, April 13th, 1180 A.D. In the name of the Holy and Indivisible Trinity, Frederick, by favor of the Divine Mercy, August Emperor of the Romans, since human memory is short and does not suffice for a crowd of things, the authority of those who preceded our age, the Divine Emperors and Kings, has decreed that those things were to be written down, which the progress of fleeting time generally removes from the knowledge of men. You're going to forget about this anyway. From the SeattleTimes.com, state use outdated data to allow logging on slope. Oh no, another accident. Like Katrina, Corps of Engineers not liable for Katrina damage court rules. The court rules. The bank says, well, no, sorry about all the human loss. It wasn't our fault. And on CNN.com, now we have another 27 murder victims murdered by corporate governance murdered by guarantee insurance. Now who logged that area? The government. Who built the uh, levees that collapsed during Hurricane Tr Katrina? The government. Who is doing this? The government. These are all guarantees. Guaranteed to produce and generate revenue for the federal state. This is what guarantee insurance is, folks. <laughs> the priest is equivalent to a psychiatrist. Uh, it's a concept designer. It uh, allows the mind to visualize many things. Uh, concepts, of course, are created in the mind. They don't exist. And um, 
For example, a priest will tell you you were born a sinner. You bad boy, you. Bad boy is a concept. Boy is a concept. Bad is a concept. And what they're doing is they're selling you concepts so you could buy the right to be. If they call you a bad boy, you grow up to earn the right to be. You never realize who you are. You're never never able to be because you're seeking you. And what did Jesus say about coveting? That's the only sin is wanting to be. That means you're empty and able to be filled up with various constitutions as the priest tells you what you consist of. Bad boy, bad girl, bad parent, bad neighbor. These things are concepts sold to you by the law merchant. This is what the Lord God is. It's the other daddy. The thing you're not supposed to be patronizing or calling father. From the reporter online, Dot com Saint stands priest arrested charged with indecent assault and harassment and this is on January 17th a priest at Saint Stanislaus Roman Catholic Church was arrested Friday and charged with misdemeanor indecent assault without consent and summary harassment in connection with an incident that occurred on December 15 2013 that was a quick return Father John H. Robach, 64, parochial vicar at the church, was arraigned Friday afternoon before District Judge Albert Augustine of Shibak, who set bail at $50,000 unsecured. Details of the criminal complaint were not immediately available. Lansdale police could not be reached for comment Friday evening. Thankfully, we're seeing the Lord God be held accountable. And this is what has to occur in the revelation or revealing them. They are being revealed right before your eyes. As these things are made evident and revealed and you realize what is written in their book or you're able to open the book, that's when your wrath is made known. Now, if you have a priest translate this or a priest interpret the Bible for you, he's going to keep telling you to keep on waiting. Keep sitting there praying for Jesus, which means your earth. And as you sit there, the priest is going to be out nailing your daughter, nailing your son, nailing your wife. We've had incidents of adultery with married females and, and priests. And in one of them, the priest ran right down to the court to restrain the husband when he found out. I mean, that's like <laughs> something else. He ran right to the court. And that's what they do. Their function is to rape your children. Nail your wife. Take your wife off of you. Let her do the restraining. Let's go make some false allegations, honey, and we'll cash in on this estate. And, of course, she never gets anything. She's just a puppet. It's all taken by the court process. Now, the bishop is the one who lays down these bonds on you. You're thinking that your church is the place to run when the court is preying on you. The church and the court are the same thing. The church and the state are the same thing. And you put your trust in that thing and call it Father, and it's preying on you from one end to the other. Part of fourth-generation warfare is the creation of concepts, calling you that bad boy. It's the same thing that they wrote down in Exodus. That word exo means outside of. And do stems from the word God. Exodus means outside of God. And when a judge comes down from a hill, 
and tells everybody that they're killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses and then offers to protect you from that. The book is called Outside of God. That means if you want to be outside of God, go ahead and patronize that judge. Don't patronize yourself, God. Don't take responsibility or authority over your earth, God. Don't patronize your own house, God. We got something else to show. We got something else to sell you. Adam, we're going to call you man now. Adam, the, the word Adam, the etymology means man, literally. So I, the judge, I'm, I'm going to start calling you man. And you're going to buy this concept. You're going to say, yep, I'm a man, I'm a woman. And the Lord God created me. It says right there in a biogenesis. Genesis is short for the doctrine of a biogenesis. A uh, meaning away from. Bio meaning life. Gen meaning mind and soul. And as this, of course, means the action of. Genesis means away from life, mind, and soul. So you, God, were fed concepts and moved away from you, God, outside of God. And attorneys and psychiatrists and judges started killing your kids and your wives, stealing from your neighbor and pointing the finger at you or your neighbor. And they started teaching you that you and your neighbor is bad. And then you and your brown neighbor is bad. And then you and your black neighbor is bad. And then you and your red neighbor is bad. And you and your Christian neighbor is bad. And you and your Zion neighbor is bad. And you and your Muslim neighbor is bad. And you and your teacher neighbor is bad. And you and your judge neighbor, or sorry, not judge. <laughs> it went too far there. But hopefully you see the point. I mean, the only way to talk you out of being God or walk you away from being God is to teach you that you're not. Look up the word freedom. Look up the word D-O-M first to, so that you know when the word D-O-M is attached, it means dominion, which when you attach it to free means someone has dominion over your state of being free. Freedom the word freedom that we we parrot like a bunch of parrots, <laughs> a bunch of goobers, uh, it actually means that you're free to do what you want as long as you obey man's law, government law. Well, if government law says you can't do anything, then you're basically free to do nothing. You can only do what the law tells you to do. And if you don't have a license to do something illegal – you're going to be in trouble. That's freedom. And we worship this word as if it's God given. And yet it's a political term or it's a political privilege. If you will, freedom is not what you think it is. It is a concept. Absolutely. It is a state of slavery and it's incredible, incredible realization. And, and that's what stems from Liberty. Most people see Liberty as a form of freedom. It is actually only granted within honors. That means that only a non-bankrupt sovereignty can grant the franchise or the incorporation of liberty. And this stems from the Forest and Chases Charter. So here you are in the forest, and the king is calling you such as an affiant. When you go in to make an affiant statement or an affidavit in court, for example, they consider that feces. Fiant is scat. It's it's uh, just basically the uh, excrement of vermin in their forest. And you can watch this throughout Black's Law Dictionary. Um, you can be lurking. There's there's a definition for latitat. That means you're lurking in their county. And again, you go back to the definitions of county, and that means counter. It's just a place where things are counted, the rolls, the rosters. the This is where the thesaurus is. That's the place where you're tricked out. In each county, behind each bench, 
or bank, which is the judge maintaining the court within the house. And of course, we talked about this the other night, that house, the House of Representatives, it has various departments and inside of those departments offices. And then it's got lower chambers of its house, which mean rooms and corridors, uh, such as the House of Delegates in West Virginia, Virginia, and New Hampshire. These things are all within the same house. It's a central form of government. It's not decentralized. There's no other puppet masters. It is the Board of Governors, the Broadcasting Board of Governors, the Board of Governors that are behind every single uh, representative, every single senator. This is the uh, Association of Corporate Council, or the ACL. And those things, the Association of Corporate Council is actually the government two times. So you have board members on the Association of Corporate Council that are also from Microsoft, that are also from Anheuser-Busch, these things are also on the uh, Council of Foreign Relations. What is foreign relations? That just means communication between one or more two, uh, foreign states. So foreign relations can be between um, Sacramento County and El Dorado County. That, that is foreign relations. And when you look at that Council of Foreign Relations, who are the members? All of your corporate governance. So who's controlling this communication? Who's controlling the intelligence that's fed to human beings? Who's controlling all of these things? And why are you being taught that liberty is something that you need to strive for? Because it can only be granted by a sovereign state. You want to be at liberty. You don't want to be granted to hold or, or to have in any way liberty. You want the whole thing.